brain damage is the signature injury in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The problem with brain damage is so many functions are controlled by the brain. What we find in soldiers returning who've been exposed to improvised explosive devices is that they don't have one deficit. They don't just have mild traumatic brain injury or severe traumatic brain injury. They've got a whole constellation of different problems. They have problems with their hearing. They have problems with their pain. They have problems controlling their behavior. They have trouble with movement. They have trouble with communication. At first, it seems like this is an impossible situation. Too many neurons, too many different systems have been damaged. But I think we owe it to our soldiers to do the best we possibly can. My lab has been working for a very long time to develop a new treatment, a new avenue for intervening in an area of the brain that we were unable to affect change in before. And the idea of the therapy is that by activating the brain's normal learning ma machinery, releasing the neuromodulators, acetylcholine and norepinephrine, which we do by stimulating a nerve in the neck called the vagus nerve. The stimulation doesn't hurt. In fact, we only deliver 1% of the electrical stimulation that's currently been FDA approved for epilepsy. The idea here is we can trigger the learning signals centers at exactly the right time. So if we want to cause change to rewire and restore the sense of touch and the sense of pain, we can do that in a very precise way using this treatment. Once we've got a subject where we can control the vagus nerve, we can also, instead of delivering touch with the vagus nerve, we can deliver sound. By adding tones of different frequency, we've shown we can eliminate tenderness in animals and more recently in human subjects. What that means now is this is just the beginning of a new era of medicine where we're able to actually fine tune the type of changes we're generating in the brain by virtue of the type of therapy that we're pairing. So if we want to have better communication skills, we might be practicing communication skills. We can go back and use therapies we've been developing over the last 50 years and turn them up, make them more targeted, more precise, and more effective in a way that we think might be able to treat in a targeted manner each of the multifaceted different deficits that the soldiers have. If that allows them to restore enough functions, they may be able to take over their normal activities, ideally return to work, and have a better quality of life than they're able to achieve now.